You may know her as the brainy, quick-witted star of Bravo's The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Jackie Goldschneider joined the cast in was a season nine and quickly became a fan favorite. While viewers may have noticed her slim figure, her husband, castmates, and friends. I know, when I, I see the pictures of her, I'm gonna talk about that one especially. But, you know, even doctors did not fully know the extent of what she says was an 18-year battle with an eating disorder, anorexia. During season 12 of the reality show, she, Jackie finally decided to get the professional help she needed and even invited the audience along on this recovery. Now in what she calls her greatest professional accomplishment, she's actually written this memoir. It's called The Weight of Beautiful. That title, really, The Weight of Beautiful. And she's sharing the heartbreaking truth of what it's like to live with an eating disorder and her very long road to recovery. Take a look. It took me 46 years to love myself unconditionally and to understand that true freedom is not caring about what other people think of you. That happiness can't be added up and measured in a notebook. That you can't run your way toward acceptance. That skin and bones don't make you special. It took me a lifetime to realize that beauty has no weight. There is no weight of beautiful. There is just me. In a daytime exclusive, please welcome to the TAMFAM, Jackie Goldschneider. Come on out, Jackie. Have a seat. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for being here. Well, let's start with happy belated birthday. Thank you. You just celebrated the birthday. Getting older. Oh, so you miss being a Virgo by that much. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. How does it feel? Another trip around the sun, as they say. I feel lucky. You feel lucky. I feel very lucky this year. This book is absolutely um, beautifully written. I love the audio por portion that we just played of you reading you in your own words. This journey started for you with the eating disorder at a place so many young women are, where someone looks at you and asks you about your weight. You wrote in the book, a doctor said to you when you were getting ready to go to college, you don't want to go to college fat. Mm -hmm. How old were you? Right now? How old were you then? I was 17. 17 years old, a trusted medical professional says, you don't want to go to college fat and recommended you start dieting. Mm -hmm. This was you. This is that kid. Yeah. You describe what it felt like. What does that do to your mind? Um, it creates a connection between being heavy and being lonely. Oh. And it made me feel like in that moment, I felt so desperate to change who I was. Um, so that I could actually enjoy my life. And I think something switched in my brain. And I realized, or I thought, mm -hmm. that I would never enjoy my life or be successful if That's I That's what those words told you. Yeah, there was a lot of shame involved, the way he spoke to me, and the way that I internalized it was, if you don't go on a diet, your life is only gonna get worse. And um, everything came together to sort of um, convinced me that I needed to be thin in order to enjoy my life. I'm looking at these pictures and reading the book. I see this kid and she's happy, but it's a mask. Yeah. How often were people, and I say we're meeting a lot of people where they are. You have a lot of young women who, you know, you go to a family gathering, Thanksgiving is coming up and you hear that you're picking up weight mm -hmm. or you'd be so much prettier if mm -hmm. dot, yes. dot, dot. Yes. What were you hearing throughout your teenage years? Yes, you would be beautiful if, mm. was a very big sentiment that I always heard. It was, um, you could have it all if, you know? Um, a lot of people made comments at school. Mm. People were very harsh to me. And then once I did start losing weight, the positive reinforcement just made everything worse. You talk about in the book, um, we think of people not eating, but the way you describe it was not the case. You write that it was just this dysfunction with food and you wrote down every minute of every day was dedicated to your anorexia. Yes. It was, um, I developed 
intense fears of what food would do to me. So it was, and that's why people need to understand that um, eating disorders are a mental illness because it didn't just become about wanting to be thin. It became um, an intense fear of how food would send me back to the person I was when I was very sad and Which very is why lonely. I, I really enjoyed this book for many reasons, but I think, and I've been a journalist for 30 years, you really do a great job of getting people to understand that it is a mental health issue. And that this was... is not just about seeing somebody in a magazine and wanting to look like that. It's in your mind. Yes, Tamron, and that's what I wanted to do with this book, is I really wanted to give people what I needed when I was struggling so badly, which was a public-facing person who had gone through it and recovered, because I didn't know what recovery looked like. Nobody talks about this stuff, and that's why there's so much shame and so much secrecy. So I really wanted to do that with the book, is take people inside my mind, show them what I went through, and also give people who might be struggling um, a public figure who they could look at and be like, that's what recovery looks like, and it's not mm -hmm. scary. Um, also, you know, I think a lot of times, especially when we're talking about young women, people ask, well, wasn't anybody around saying anything? Did your family notice? But to your point, people were validating the thinness because they saw this kid who, you know, a doctor said was overweight, and now you're getting thin, and it's like, oh, you're doing something right, not yes. how you're doing it. Right. Well, society definitely yes, society. validated it. They don't care. People don't care. Um, they don't want to hear the struggles to right. get thin. They just want to see you thin. That's what's glamorous. It's not glamorous to have an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. It is glamorous to be thin. Right, and, and um, we were talking about it in our show right. on the, the, the summer of skinny, and I was very cautious in calling it that word, but I said to my cousin who said, you can't call that show you know, skinny. I said, but that's ex we call it in polite conversation very thin, mm -hmm. but we know what people are seeking, some through health, right? This is a, a medicine that many people need throughout, but others feel they need to have a photo on the gram that looks a certain way. Well, I have a lot of opinions on that. <laughs> Go ahead. We're a show about opinions. Go ahead. Um, about the whole Ozempic trend? Is that Go for it. Okay. So, well, I do believe that the medication, like you said, does have a lot of benefits for the people who need it. But for people who just want to lose the last 10 pounds, um, I think that it induces an eating disorder because it shuts off your hunger. It lets you eliminate your hunger the same way that um, I tried to do for 20 years. I tried to outrun my hunger and not acknowledge it and fool it and fool myself into feeling satisfied on as little food as possible. And these drugs make that, um, make people, give people the ability to do, to shut off hunger without eating, which to me, is the beginnings of an eating disorder. So it scares me. I should make the point out that we reached out to Novo Nordics for a comment, and, and they say that they recognize that eating disorders are serious conditions and deserve specialized clinical attention from healthcare providers who treat them. We trust that healthcare providers are evaluating patients' individual needs and determining which medicine is right for that particular patient. I'm a journalist, I have to say that, because we do reach out, and of these course. companies say that they are not marketing it for those reasons, but we recognize we live in a real world mm -hmm. and we have eyes.